In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everybody. I'm offering this Mass for you, the people of the parish. I was on Twitter this morning, and the TV presenter, Fern Britton, asked the question, did Jesus ever laugh? So I thought, well, I can maybe answer that question. So I replied saying that um, Jesus was like us in all things but sin, so that we can confidently say that he laughed. So anyway, I also said I would remember her in my prayers at this Mass this morning, so we remember Fern Britton. I'm offering this Mass for you, the people of the parish, if I haven't already said that. Our scripture readings this morning remind us that if we wish to be glorified with Christ, then we must die with him. As we begin our celebration, we pause to reflect on how well we've died to ourselves for the sake of others. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. In today's first reading, through his prophet Jeremiah, God laments the passing of the old covenant made with his people in the desert. His people have ignored it and continued to sin. But God never changes his plan. Now in the midst of his people's destruction by their neighbours, when all seems lost, he has a new and deeper covenant in mind. This will be a covenant not simply of words, but of mutual understanding between people. The psalm echoes our desire for this new covenant. From earliest times, Jesus realised he was to suffer. He did so aloud and in silent tears, says the author of the letter to the Hebrews, knowing that the only one who could save him from death was the very one for whom he was laying down his life. At the centre of Christ's mission was his obedience to his Father. Today's second reading reflects the words of Jesus in Gethsemane. Father, take this cup away from me, but let not my will, but yours, be done. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. See, the days are coming, it is the Lord who speaks, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. But not a covenant like the one I made with their ancestors on the day they took, I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant of mine, so I had to show them who was master. It is the Lord who speaks. No, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel when those days arrive. It is the Lord who speaks. Deep within them I will plant my law writing it on their hearts. Then I will be their God, and they shall be my people. There shall be no further need for neighbour to teach neighbour, or brother to say to brother, learn to know the Lord. No, they will all know me. The least, no, the least know less than the greatest. That is, it is the Lord who speaks. Since I will forgive their iniquity, and never call their sin to mind. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The response to the psalm is, 
a pure heart create for me, O God. A pure heart create for me, O God. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion blot out my offence. O wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. A pure heart create for me, O God. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. A pure heart create for me, O God. Give me again the joy of your health. With a spirit of fever sustain me, that I may teach transgress transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. A pure heart create for me, O God. The second reading from a letter to the Hebrews. During his life on earth, Christ offered up prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death. And, and he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learned to obey through suffering. But having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Glory to you, O Christ, with you are the word of God. If a man serves me, says the Lord, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. These approached Philip, who came from Bethsaida in Galilee, and put this request to him. Sir, we should like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together went to tell Jesus. Jesus replied to them, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you most solemnly, Unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my father will honour him. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. People standing by who heard this said it was a clap of thunder. Others said it was an angel speaking to him. Jesus answered, it was not for my sake that this voice came, but for yours. Now sentence is being passed on this world. Now the prince of this world is to be overthrown. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I shall draw all men to myself. By these words, he indicated the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last weekend, our parish reps, Father Thomas and myself, spent a day working on Synod 2020. As with most meetings nowadays, it was conducted over Zoom, and we were presented with the proposals that are to be voted on the Synod, which is taking place again over Zoom later this year. Pope Francis has commended synods to the Church as the way forward for discerning where the Lord is calling his Church. The Church is always in need of reform and renewal, as is indicated by the Latin phrase, Ecclesia Semper, Reformanda Est. The Church must always be reformed. This saying was initially used by the Reformers and was taken up by the Catholic Church at Vatican II in the document Lumen Gentium. 
While synods are the way forward, I think we also have to be realistic about the possible outcomes. Ultimately, the message we have to offer is one of self-sacrifice for the sake of others, and that's always going to be a hard sell. Please God, all of us here know that as well as being difficult, serving God brings great joy. But we have to recognise that for a lot of people, it's unpalatable. Self-sacrifice is the common theme that unites the readings today. When Jeremiah speaks in the first reading about the new covenant between God and his people, it's about self-sacrifice. Echoing this, the author of the letter to the Hebrews tells how Christ learned to obey through suffering. And Jesus says the wheat grain must die if it's to yield its harvest. These readings can sound off-putting, which is why the work of evangelization will always be hard. The idea of giving of ourselves is not one that's immediately attractive. Yet if we think about it, many of us already live lives of self-sacrifice. Those with children know what it is to sacrifice. Those who are married know that this commitment requires selflessness. And those who've worked in any sort of employment no, a degree of sacrifice is inevitable. In short, we all know what it is to give of ourselves for the sake of others. That you're here this morning when you could be doing something else shows that you understand that. To the uninitiated, this behaviour can seem puzzling. To explain it for me, there are two basic answers. The first is because what has been done for us we acknowledge our debt and we try to do the same for others. And the second is that we acknowledge that giving of ourselves is the only way for others to benefit. When we sacrifice ourselves, we're responding to what God has already done for us. And while it's true we can never repay the Lord for all he's done, we demonstrate our gratitude by imitating his example. Over the coming days, we'll recall how great our Lord's self-sacrifice was. And as we journey with the Lord through the days of the Easter Triduum, we remember that it's our vocation too, to be the grain willing to die so that it can bear much fruit. We profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn now in prayer to God, our Heavenly Father, remembering the needs of the Church and the world. We pray for the Church, that she may be faithful to her mission to preach the good news of a life of self-sacrifice. Lord, hear us. For all our leaders, religious and civil, that they may follow the ways of justice and peace. Lord, hear us. 
for all those who bear the cross of illness. Lord, hear us. For ourselves, that we may be faithful to all that the Lord is calling us to. Lord, hear us. For those who have died and whose funerals take place this coming week, Maureen Gray and Brian Watts, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. In this moment of silence, we remember those needs kept in the quiet of our hearts. Heavenly Father, you know our needs even before we can express them. Hear then and grant these our prayers that one day we may join you in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift, each year, your faithful awaits the sacred Paschal Feast, with a joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for Mass this morning, those of you here in church and those of you at home. Bye, God bless.